welcome everyone to this week's first episode of Dads on Wrestling. There will be two this week. Uh, I am, of course, Jeff Meacham, along with the Renegade of Wrestling, J.J. Williams. Just call us Team Heartless. <laughs> yeah. You know, did, did, did the comment actually show up on the page? No. Or did, okay, so, all right, well... To the, to the person that sent out a, a comment that ended up in the inbox and not on the board, because I, I, I assume it got deleted out of, you know, common sense, I, I would guess, uh, regarding us not addressing what we're addressing today until now, mm -hmm. um, kiss off, because, like... Why are you covering your mouth and stuff? The boy's gone. Say what you want to say. Well, I... Go fuck yourself. Okay. I was, I was Hillbilly Hound Dog on YouTube. Oh, okay. Well, I, I know if we were going to add him because we didn't actually, you know, get the comment in the. Uh, Still came to my mailbox. All right. Yes, and to the person that actually had some common sense, um, I forget who it was now, and I feel bad, but somebody did point out the fact that I'll yes. bring it up right now. Okay, thank I'm you. I'm using my handy dandy phone to go over everything. Yes, smarter than us phone. Half the time, these damn phones. But, uh, um, let's see. Ill A Sports 4. Um, yeah, he's yeah. the one that was... Point out, one. point out the fact that we do tape our shows in advance <coughs> a lot of the time, because we have lives. But it may well, not seem like it. I, I was going to say but Stat you know, Boy has a life. You know, well, no, because I've got school. We've got, you know, we've got, we have stuff going on where we can't, you know, always be in front of the, you know, the the camera every week and you know, every day, you know. So we tape shows in advance and go ahead and break the fourth wall here. The ninety-five percent of our shows are filmed on Saturday and Sunday prior to the week they go up. Exactly, and therefore because that's the day everybody is home mm -hmm. and we can. Bane out after the bell. Renegade, RSI, Stat Boy, Dads, The Weekend Shows. The only one that's usually an exception to that rule is Stat Boy because he likes to talk about current events also, so he'll usually film on a Wednesday or a Thursday for his Friday show. Exactly. The Weekend Mashups, all those get filled on the weekend prior to them going up. Exactly. The only other per exception is prediction shows where we usually go to clothing company on like Wednesday mm -hmm. and handle that then. And by the way, we will have our Night of Champions predictions up this weekend. It just and they won't be from clothing company, company this time. We just didn't have the time to get down there. Exactly. So, the reason we're sitting here in front of you guys is because you have asked us all <coughs> week Yes. our thoughts on the situation that happened Monday with the author of this book, It's Good to Be the King, um, Jerry Lawler, who, if you've been living under a rock and don't know, um, during a, after competing in his own tag team match, essentially, on Raw, he went to ringside to continue his work at commentary with Michael Cole, and during the Daniel Bryan and Kane versus Primetime Players, which was somewhat sort of a number one contenders tag team title match, I don't understand that logic, but, yeah. you know, um, and again, I, I'd love to see Bryan with another belt, yeah, but... but the tag teaming with Kane? Yeah, it's weird. We'll get more into that on the prediction show. Yeah. Um, and I, I didn't hear all this because I, I had stepped away during part of that match when I was watching it, but apparently uh, the King had some trouble breathing, was you know kind of hunched over holding his chest, and on a fan video that I saw on YouTube shot from the crowd, you can see them interacting. All of a sudden you see Jerry just topple right over out of his chair. I was like, oh my God, it was, it was horrid. Turned out he had a heart attack. And, uh, you know, everybody, of course, was panicking, and everybody was, you know, freaking out, and he ended up going into surgery and had a balloon and a stent put into his chest through his, I, I, I think through, I think the procedure was done through his groin, if I remember reading the reports correctly, because for open heart surgery, obviously, they opened the heart area, but from what they did with him, they went in through the groin, that way it was less, um, less risky. And as of yesterday, when we were waiting to do our, uh, our King's Stanley Cup photo shoots, which, okay. um, the news was coming in from Michael Cole himself on Twitter that he had talked to the King on the phone, and he was being responsive, and everything was going very well, and prior to that, he was writing detailed notes, and letting everybody know where he was, and how, you know, what had happened, so he, he was very responsive after a day or so, but, you know, all these, you know, Facebook posts and, po and pages going up, we were praying for Jerry, get well soon, Jerry, it's like, guys, he's not dead. 
guys, he's 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 in he's in trouble, but he's not, you know, you know, horribly off yet. You know, he's he's recovering very quickly. Yeah. And everybody that jumped to the conclusion that it was over, it was the end, you know, was just getting all the reports in and not knowing the whole story. Which is the main reason that we did not do anything right away. We try to pride ourselves here on not just going off of internet rumors yeah. like other shows do. Exactly. We wanted to wait a couple of days and get all the cold hard facts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> What's the point in going up on Monday night, Tuesday morning and talking about Jerry the King Lawler having a heart attack? You know, at the time we didn't even know what it was. Yeah. And then having to go up on Thursday and do a tribute show to the king because he passed away. Or or, 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 or doing an attraction for spewing out false garbage. Yeah. You know, and it's like... You know, when it's a storyline. Exactly. That was my big concern, is at the very beginning, I thought this was another storyline. And people were like, well, you're stupid, you're a mark, how can you think it's a storyline? Shawn Michaels collapsed in the rain in 94, 95, and it was all part of an angle. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's not like WWE hasn't done shit like this before. Right, exactly. You know? I think and I think I, I, I think the main reason people, you know, we're getting on your case or whatever is because of the current environment that we live in in a PG world where doing something like a heart attack would not exactly be considered uh, you know, passable by current WWE standards. And okay, I and think, yeah. cut the show. Exactly. Show show must go on, my ass. This is a PG world, not an attitude era world. Mm -hmm. Cut the show. Exactly, and that was my that was my complaint to people that you know we talked to that are you know more connected than us, and I, we we kept being told you know the show must go on and everything like that, and it's like I get having to fulfill television commitments, I get having to you know you know satisfy the the the, the, the ad guys and everything like that, but it's like you know one of your guys just literally fell out of his chair, you know, almost dying. And the show must go on. Did we not learn anything from Kansas City? Did we not learn anything from 1999 and Over the Edge? The big difference in that one, I think, if there is a difference, isn't even the errors that they happened in. That was a pay-per-view. True. That's the big difference in that. At the end of the day, the only people that paid anything to see Raw were the people that bought tickets to be there. Everybody else, the millions watching at home, as The Rock would say, mm -hmm. were watching on basic cable. Right. You know. Or, or it's the, not going to kill the internet, like them. <laughs> it's not going to kill them to lose the show. No. You know. Jerry Lawler has a heart attack. You cut cameras. You announce to the crowd, we're sorry, but this has just happened, and we do not feel that it is right to continue with the show. Everyone here will get a 50% refund off of the price of their ticket because they'd seen about half the show. Mm -hmm. And a voucher for the next time we come to town. Right. And we will make this date up soon. Yeah. And you know, as, as much of the story as was the king and his medical condition, I, I went on... Um, I talked to somebody, and I ended up letting them know that I felt, I, you know, I was I was proud to call myself a John Cena and a CM Punk fan Monday night because those two guys went out there along with Brett. You know, I, I, I got Brett in Montreal after what happened to his brother, having something like that happen. He must have been a mess, like everybody else I'm sure was backstage. But for John and Punk to go out there and just deliver that just intense exchange, putting over, finally both of them putting over this match on Sunday, you know, to have, you know, John literally, you know, tell CM Punk in French and English that he was going to kick his ass. Exactly what he did. And, and, you know, Punk, you know, oh, you're, you know, you're lowering yourself to speak like the locals and seeing us like, dude, I didn't lower myself. I come down, I, uh, I speak with them, I speak for them. Let me tell you in English, I'm just going to kick your ass. And Cena, I think, finally got that bizarro world up there in Canada to come over to his side, at least for a moment. And the more important thing was for that brief segment, that brief few minutes, whatever it was, everybody was allowed to get their minds off the fact that their beloved color commentator, their, the guy they've been watching almost 20 years in the WWE alone, 
is in trouble. Yeah. yeah, the show ended with Michael Cole giving us a message about the King, but at least during that segment hyping the WWE Championship match, we were allowed to, as we were supposed to do with the WWE programming, suspend disbelief. And I think that was very, very powerful and admirable on the part of John Cena, CM Punk, and Bret Hart to not only go out there during this, but to deliver the way they did. And again, you haven't seen that yet. I, I intend to get the video on on YouTube for you before Sunday, that, that, before the prediction show. I don't show, know that how that will happen. But we'll, we'll make it work. Before the prediction show, that way we can at least, you know, you, we can have a frame of reference. But it's been a very bizarre week, you know, and... You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, play a pity party or whatever. And no. I'm not, and, 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 and I know I'm dominating the show, and I apologize for that. As well, I, I was, didn't want to yeah. do a show on this, so I know. It's whatever. Yeah. But, you know, this week this week is always hard for, you know, myself and my family. I mean, you know, you've got the, the, the tragedy of 9-11, which is always, you know, horrible, even 11 years later now. You know, you've got, you know, I, I you know, in, oh God, what was it, 30... 33 years ago, before I was even born, my uncle passed away this week in history. My grandfather passed away today, 11 years ago, September 13th, and because of the 9-11 attacks, my mom and my and her sister couldn't fly up to say goodbye in time, so that, that's always hard to deal with. You know, um, at the 9-11 attacks, the King's Scouts, uh, Ace Bailey and Mark Mavis, of course, were on Flight 175, that the, the second plane to crash into the tower. And so the King's family always has a hard week with that. And now, you know, granted, I'm not close to Jerry Lawler. I've talked to him a couple times on the phone. I, you know, I'm not like a friend or whatever. But, you know, it, it, it feels like, you know, people with, that are tied to wrestling in some way or another always feel the, the, the loss or the impact of something like this happening. And we all kind of, wrestling fans seem to kind of, come together when stuff like this happens, and you, 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 you really see that in like a lot of other sports or entertainment, you know, things, and maybe maybe that's just my view, but I've, I've shared it with a few people. I think it just depends on who it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I can't think of an example right now, but it's like, it just depends on who the wrestler is and how much the fan cared for that person. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, think about it. Think, think about it like this. You know, you had, you had, you know, Eddie Guerrero who who passed away. You know, mm -hmm. very suddenly after you know, being rec being rec sober and clean for four years or whatever it was, and now just you know just ha having his heart given away. And then you had the situation like Chris Benoit, who you know, initial reaction was, oh my God, you know, Chris Benoit is gone, and you know, the, the whole community came together, and then within 48 hours. The community split about a hundred different ways because you had the the bitter ex you know stars who were trying to get that last 15 minutes of fame going on these CNN shows right. and everything like that trying to you know bury the business and you had you know the people within the WWE trying to you know play you know damage control and you know things like that it it, it does depend on who it is I think right. I think a better example and one just came to my head was you know you said Eddie Guerrero and you know that one tore me to shreds like I know it tore you like I know it tore Jade then you got like test. Okay. It's like, meh. Yeah. It's like, not, you know, trying to be ill towards his family or anybody, but just like test didn't matter that much to me. Well, it was like test died. Yeah. It, okay. Yeah. It, it, it's it's always sad when somebody passes away or gets hurt or whatever, but it's just it's just the the impact that they made on you as a fan. Yeah. You it's know. like, and it's not like I had bad experiences with Test. I got yeah. to meet him mm -hmm. at Rob's store. You know, he had come to pick up Stacy, who he was dating at the time, mm -hmm. and I was able to get autographs from him. I didn't get any pictures because they were, you know, really rushing him out of there with her. I'm sure. But I was able to get a couple signatures. I got a figure personalized to me from him. He was a really chill dude. Yeah. But he didn't have the same impact on my life as Eddie did as Benoit did, you know, even as Owen has, mm -hmm. you know, when he had passed, I was still fairly new to everything, so he hadn't affected me that much yet. Mm -hmm. Since his passing, I've gotten a lot more into his work, right? So, had that happened today, it would have affected me a lot more than it did when it happened. 
you know, and <clears throat> not trying to be rude or disrespectful, Lawler just hasn't had that effect on me. To where, you know, I feel like I would be torn up at his loss. Monday nights would be empty without him on commentary. I'll give him that. But you've got Matt Stryker. You've got William Regal. You've got, you know, a handful of people you could call JBL back. Yeah. You've got Foley. Yeah. You've got a handful of people that could do the job. And Will there be another Lawler on commentary? No. Is that a good or a bad thing? Because I was talking with you about this, I think it was on Tuesday, or on Monday night, but it happened. It's like, some of Lawler's commentary lately has gotten very, very sketchy. Mm -hmm. It's like, listen to the cheers for Seamus, and the crowd's chanting, Ziggler, Ziggler, Ziggler. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I understand he's being pumped what to say through a headset, but it makes him sound like an idiot. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, for me, you know, it, I, I told you this Monday, I hated to admit that I was, you know, proud and admired Michael Cole because I've never liked Michael Cole mm -hmm. in the entire 15 years he's been with WWE. But he, he was a trooper Monday mm -hmm. night in the face of something so horrible happening literally right next to him. And, you know, thank God for WWE doctors and EMTs being right there on the spot. You know, JR said all week, you know, had, had had he been in a hotel or in the car on the way back from the arena or whatever, it'd probably be a whole other story right now. So, those guys are trained to do what they do. Um, all right. I've had enough sad crap. Uh, this weekend, well, of course, tomorrow, Stat Boy. Stat Boy, I'm sure, will have his predictions for Sunday. Yes. Um, he'll probably do two parts. He'll probably do... You know, he'll probably talk about this situation. Mm -hmm. He'll probably talk about some sports like he always does. Mm -hmm. And then he'll also have his predictions. Yep. And then, of course, we'll be back. I guess we're going to do this Saturday for yes. uh, our night change predictions. Um, and we'll we'll go from there, I guess. Uh, so yeah, there's there it is. We gave you we talked about Jerry for you guys, like you've been wanting us to all week. So um, hope this was everything you wanted it to be. Because, yeah, like I said, at the end of the day, I didn't want to fucking do this show. I know. Not until, I didn't want to do anything about it until he passed away. And that may sound heartless and cold-blooded, but at the end of the day, he's doing fine. Mm -hmm. All this concern, the pray for Jerry Lawler Facebook pages, for nothing. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a trooper. He's doing fine. Will he be there in his seat on Monday? Probably not. No. no. But expect him to be back on television very soon. All right, guys, we'll see you this weekend for Night of Champions predictions, and then next week, of course, after the bell's back on Monday, we'll go from there. See you then.